day 93, Judges 10 through 12. This is just the word where we're reading chronologically through the Bible in a year. This is day 93 of 365, the New King James Version of Judges 10 through 12. Now, after Abimelech there arose to save Israel, Tola, the son of Pua, the son of Dodo, a man of Issachar, and he dwelt in Shamir in the mountains of Ephraim. He judged Israel 23 years, and he died and was buried in Shamir. After him arose Jair, a Galeadite, and he judged Israel 22 years. Now he had 30 sons who rode on 30 donkeys. They also had 30 towns, which are called Havat Jair, to this day, which are in the land of Gilead. And Jair died and was buried in Canaan. Then the children of Israel again did evil in the sight of the Lord and served the Baals and the Ashtorets, the gods of Syria, the gods of Sidon, the gods of Moab, the gods of the people of Ammon, and the gods of the Philistines. And they forsook the Lord and did not serve him. So the anger of the Lord was hot against Israel, and he sold them into the hands of the Philistines and into the hands of the people of Ammon. From that year, they harassed and oppressed the children of Israel for 18 years. And the children of Israel who were on the other side of the Jordan in the land of Amorites in Gilead. Moreover, the people of Ammon crossed over the Jordan to fight against Judah also, against Benjamin and against the house of Ephraim, so that Israel was severely distressed. And the children of Israel cried out to the Lord, saying, We have sinned against you, because we have both forsaken our God and served the Baals. So the Lord said to the children of Israel, did I not deliver you from the Egyptians and from the Amorites and from the people of Ammon and from the Philistines? Also the Sidonians and the Amalekites and Ammonites oppre oppressed you and you cried out to me and I delivered you from their hand. Yet you have forsaken me and served of the gods. Therefore, I will deliver you no more. Go and cry to the gods which you have chosen. Let them deliver you in your time of distress. And the children of Israel said to the Lord, We have sinned. Do to us whatever seems best to you. Only deliver us this day, we pray. So they put away the foreign god from among them and served the Lord. And his soul could no longer endure the misery of Israel. Then the people of Ammon gathered together and encamped in Gilead, and the children of Israel assembled together and encamped in Mizpah. And the people, the leaders of Gilead, said to one another, Who is the man who will begin the fight against the people of Ammon? He said, he shall be head over all the inhabitants of Gilead. Chapter 11. Now Jephthah the Gileadite was a mighty man of valor, but he was the son of a harlot, and Gilead begot Jephthah. Gilead's wife bore sons, and when his wife's sons grew up, they drove Jephthah out. And said to him, you shall have no inheritance in our father's house, for you are the son of another woman. Then Jephthah fled from his brothers and dwelt in the land of Tob, Tob. And worthless men banded together with Jephthah and went out raiding with him. And it came to pass after a time that the people of Ammon made war against Israel. And so it was when the people of Ammon made war against Israel that the leaders of Gilead went to get Jephthah from the land of Tob. Then they said to Jephthah, Come and be our commander, that we may fight against the people of Ammon. So Jephthah said to the elders of Gilead, Did you not hate me and expel me from my father's house? Why have you come to me now when you are in distress? And the elders of Gilead said to Jephthah, That is why we have turned again to you now, that you may go with us and fight against the people of Ammon and be our head over all the inhabitants of Gilead. So Jephthah said to the elders of Gilead, If you take me back home to fight against the people of Ammon, 
Simon, and the Lord delivers them to me. Shall I be your head? And the elders of Gilead said to Jephthah, the Lord will be a witness between us. If we do not do according to your words, then Jephthah went with the elders of Gilead and the people made him head and commander over them. And Jephthah spoke all his words before the Lord in Mizpah. Now Jephthah sent messengers to the king of the people of Ammon, saying, What do you have against me that you have come to fight against me in my land? And the king of the people of Ammon answered the messengers of Jephthah, Because Israel took away my land when they came out of Egypt from the Arnon as far as the Jabuk and to the Jordan. Now, therefore, restore those lands peaceably. So Jephthah again sent messengers to the king of the people of Ammon and said to him, Thus says Jephthah, Israel did not take away the land of Moab, nor the land of the people of Ammon. For when Israel came up from Egypt, they walked through the wilderness as far as the Red Sea and came to Kadesh. Then Israel sent messengers to the king of Edom, saying, Please let me pass through your land. But the king of Edom would not heed, and in like manner they sent it, they sent to the king of Moab, but he would not consent. So Israel remained in Kadesh, and they went along through the wilderness and bypassed the land of Edom and the land of Moab, came to the east side of the land of Moab, and encamped on the other side of the Arnon. But they did not enter the border of Moab or the Arnon was the border of for the Arnon was the border of Moab. Then Israel sent messengers to Shihon, king of the Amorites, king of Heshbon. And Israel said to him, please let us pass through your land into our place. But Shihon did not trust Israel to pass through his territory. So Shihon gathered all his people together, encamped in Jahaz, and fought against Israel. And the Lord God of Israel delivered Shihon and all his people into the land, hand of Israel, and they defeated them. Thus Israel gained possession of the land of the Amorites who inhabited that country. They took possession of all the territory of the Amorites from the Arnon to the Jabuk and from the wilderness to the Jordan. And now the Lord God of Israel has depossessed the Amorites from before his people Israel. Should you then possess it? Will you not possess whatever Kamash your God gives you to possess? So whatever the Lord our God takes possession of before us, we will possess. And now, are you any better than Balak, the son of Zippor, king of Moab? Did he ever strive against Israel? Did he ever fight against us? While Israel dwelt in Heshbon and its villages, in Aroer and its villages, and in the cities along the banks of the Arnon, for 300 years, why did you not recover them within that time? Therefore, I have not sinned against you, but you wronged me by fighting against me. May the Lord, the judge, render judgment this day between the children of Israel and the people of Ammon. However, the king of the people of Ammon did not heed the words which Jephthah sent him. Then the spirit of the Lord came upon Jephthah, and he passed through Gilead and Manasseh, and passed through Mizpah of Gilead, and from Mizpah of Gilead he advanced towards the people of Ammon. And Jephthah made a vow to the Lord and said, If you will indeed deliver the people of Ammon into my hands, then it will be that whatever comes out of the doors of my house to meet me, when I return in peace from the people of Ammon shall surely be the Lord's and I will offer it up as a burnt offering. So Jephthah advanced towards the people of Ammon to fight against them and the Lord delivered them into his hands and he defeated them from a rower as far as Manith, 20 cities and to Abel Karamim with a very great slaughter. Thus the people of Ammon were subdued before the children of Israel. Then Jephthah came to his house at Mizpah, where 
there was his daughter coming out to meet him with timbrels and dancing, and she was his only child. Besides her, he had neither son nor daughter. And it came to pass when he saw her that he tore his clothes and said, Alas, my daughter, you have brought me very low. You are among those who trouble me, for I have given my word to the Lord, and I cannot go back on it. So she said to him, my father, if you have given your word to the Lord, do to me according to what has gone out of your mouth, because the Lord has avenged you of your enemies, the people of Ammon. Then she said to her father, let this thing be done for me. Let me alone for two months that I may go and wander on the mountains and bewail my virginity, my friends and I. So he said, go. And she went her way for two months and she went with her friends and bewailed her virginity on the mountains. And it was so at the end of two months that she returned to her father and he carried out his vow with her, which he had vowed. She knew no man. And it became a custom in Israel that the daughters of Israel went four days each year to lament the daughter of Jephthah the Gileadite. Chapter 12. Then the men of Ephraim gathered together, crossed over towards Zaphon, and said to Jephthah, Why did you cross over to fight against the people of Ammon and did not call us to go with you? We will burn your house down on you with fire. And Jephthah said to them, My people, And I were in a great struggle with the people of Ammon. And when I called you, you did not deliver me out of their hands. So when I saw that you would not deliver me, I took my life in my hands and crossed over against the people of Ammon. And the Lord delivered them into my hand. Why then have you come up to me this day to fight against me? Now Jephthah gathered together all the men of Gilead and fought against Ephraim. And the men of Gilead defeated Ephraim because they said, you Gileadites, Gileadites are fugitives of Ephraim among the Ephraimites and among the Manassites. The Gileadites seized the fords of the Jordan before the Ephraimites arrived. And when they and when any Ephraimite who crossed and when any Ephraimite who escaped said, let me cross over, the men of Gilead would say to him, are you an Ephraimite? If he said no, then they would say to him, then say Shiboleth, and he would say Siboleth, for he could not pronounce it right. Then they would take him and kill him at the fords of the Jordan. There fell at that time 42,000 Ephraimites. And Jephthah judged Israel six years. Then Jephthah the Gileadite died and was buried among the cities of Gilead. After him, Ibzan of Bethlehem judged Israel. He had 30 sons, and he gave away 30 daughters in marriage and brought in 30 daughters from elsewhere for his sons. He judged Israel seven years. Then Ibzan died and was buried at Bethlehem. After him, Elon the Zebulonite judged Israel. He judged Israel 10 years. And Elon the Zebulonite died and was buried at Ai Jalan in the country of Zebulon. After him, Abdon, the son of Hillel, the Pyrothonite, judged Israel. He had 40 sons and 30 grandsons who rode on 70 young donkeys. He judged Israel eight years. Then Abdon, the son of Hillel, the Pyrathonite, died and was buried in Pyrathon in the land of Ephraim in the mountains of the Amalekites. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading of the word. That was Judges 10 through 12.